Welcome to A Message from Heaven, presented by The Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee, where John Shannon Sr. is the preacher. Here you can expect a cordial greeting from those who love God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is our privilege to invite you to study with us from the Bible, God's holy and divine will made known unto man. And now presenting ministering evangelist, John Shannon Singer. Hello, I'm John Shannon. I'm the preacher for the Church of Christ and meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you and welcome to a message from heaven. This is a weekly uh, broadcast presented by the Church of Christ, 2400 James Road. We thank you again in a very powerful way for watching this telecast. Thank you so very much. And we hope that you, your lives are enriched uh, by the preaching and the teaching of God's Word. Thank you so very much for watching this program. Today, I'd like to call your attention to the book of Acts, the chapter is 10, and we'll look at one verse. We'll read that particular verse, and we will draw our lesson uh, thoughts from this particular verse, and we'll announce our subject. The Bible says in Acts 10:33, immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Today, I want to speak on a subject, the right attitude of Cornelius the right attitude towards Cornelius. You see, we all have attitudes. Uh, when, you, when I say attitude, I mean your spirit. Uh, just how are you? Sometimes individuals say, how's your attitude today? Uh, he's in good spirit today. Uh, he's in bad spirit. Well, we're going to look at the right attitude of Cornelius. And this implies that there can be a wrong attitude. And we're going to look at the right attitude of Cornelius. Number one, let's talk a little bit about Cornelius. In Acts 10 and Acts 11, Luke records the situation with Cornelius. Cornelius, watch it, according to Acts 10, verse number one, he was a Roman centurion. What do you mean? Of the Italian band. What do you mean by that? Cornelius was in a powerful position. He was a captain in the army of the Italian band, uh, and he was over 100 men, a captain, a centurion over one, Roman centurion over 100 men. Cornelius also was a devout man, as Acts chapter 10 and verse number 2. Uh, he was a God-fearing man with all his house, uh, and he was a people person. He gave much alms to the poor, so he was a giving man. And also he was a praying man. Now, all of this about a man named Cornelius. Here's a man that's not saved. Cornelius is not saved. Cornelius is still in his sin. And he's got a lot of good characteristics that Christians should portray. He was a devout man, God-fearing man, a people person. He was a giving man. Watch it. He was a praying man. But it was something that he needed. He needed parting from his sins. Now, in all of this episode, God sent an angel. 
appeared to Cornelius and told Cornelius that your prayers, your prayers have been heard. Are you sure about that? Turn to Acts 10 and verse number 31. The Bible says, and say it, Cornelius, thy prayers heard, and thy arms are arms are has in, in arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. In other words, God knew that he prayed. But was Cornelius praying for forgiveness of sin? I doubt it very seriously. But he was hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And so what happened? God sent an angel and told Cornelius, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Your prayers have been heard. I want you to send to Joppa, and I want you to fetch one whose name is Simon Peter. He lodges by the seaside in one Tannus, whose also name is Simon. But he's not the one. He's just staying there. But the one you want is Simon Peter. And notice what the text says. Let's read that text. Acts 10. And verse number five. And now send me into Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. We want to get the right man. And you need to get the right man because the right man is going to give you the right message. If you get the wrong man, the wrong man is going to give you the wrong message. Simon Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner whose house is by the seaside, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Wait a minute. Here's a praying man. Here's a giving man. Here's a God-fearing man. Here's a devout man. But it's something he ought to do. It was something that this man needed to do. So he went on and sent for Peter. Sent his men down to Peter. And you know, God had to work a miracle to get Peter to see in a vision, to see, watch it. There's some men down at the door, Peter. You need to go with them. So what happened? Peter went on with these men and came to the household of Carnes. Now, after they came there, notice what happened. Let me give you a little outline. We have the conversation with Cornelius. That all right? Conversation, Peter and Cornelius had a conversation together. And then we have the clarification of to Cornelius. Acts 10, verse 36 to 43. And then later on we have the conversion of Cornelius. Acts 10, 44 through 48. And Acts 11, verse 1 through 18. Now I want you to listen to something about the right attitude. When Peter got there, the Cornelius. Cornelius bowed down to worship him, and Peter told him to get up. I'm also a man. You got it? Now, then they, Peter began to realize what's happening here. Something is taking place. What, what's really happening? We have uh, the review. He told him, Cornelius told Peter about how he was praying, and an angel told him to do, send the job to fetch him, and now you're here. And Peter, Peter said to Cornelius, for what purpose have you sent for me? And then Car Cornelius told him why he sent for him. And here is Peter is Cornelius and his household. And Peter had six Jewish brethren along with him to verify what was going on at this Gentile situation. Peter was down at the Gentile house. Cornelius. Now, look at the attitude of Cornelius here, the right attitude. Look at the right attitude. Now, let's look at verse 33 again, and that's the verse that we're going to deal with. I've been kind of bringing you up to where I want to lead you, and it's verse 33. Now, here's the attitude. Remember, Peter is going to tell Cardinals what he ought to do. 
but watch the attitude of Cornelius. So point number one, we'll see in verse 33, the right attitude of the candidates. That's the sinners. Look at what the Bible says in verse 33. Look at verse 33, Acts 10, 33. Let's look at it. It says, immediately, see the attitude. When God told him to do something, it was immediately, immediately, therefore, I sent for thee. Promptly, I mean right away, I sent men to Joppa to get thee, you. So he promptly did it. And Peter, he says, therefore I sent for thee. He sent for Peter. Why I sent for Peter? If the man is already saved, why I sent for Peter? Well, Peter's going to tell him what he ought to do. That's good, isn't it? Well, and then Peter promptly performed. Carnegie said, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's the right attitude. Immediately he did it. And Peter came. Now you remember, Peter is a Jew and Carnes is a Gentile. Peter later on tells Carnes of a truth, I perceive that God is no respected person. Acts 10, 34 and 35. God is no respected person. God doesn't care anything about your color. He doesn't care anything about your culture. And he doesn't care anything about your cash. But he does, he is concerned about your soul. Now, Peter, you preached on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 souls were baptized into Christ. Peter told that mass of people, the first Pentecost, after the resurrection of, of Christ from the dead into ascension to heaven, watch it, first Pentecost after that, Watch it. They cried out and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and your children and all those of the fall, even as many as the Lord God shall call. Now, do you think Peter's going to tell Cornelius something different than he told those Jews on the day of Pentecost. I think not. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I want you to see that. Peter, watch it. He came. And then, in verse 33, the last part of that, 33a, it says, Now, therefore, we are all here. Look at the attitude of Cornelius and his household. The right attitude. We are here. Oh, I like that. We all are here. When something is that important, everybody needs to be present. He said, we all are here. I like this. That's the right attitude of the candidates of the center. Look at point number two, the right attitude of the, 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 toward the creator. He said, we, that's the same. He said, we, we are all present before God. That's a God-fearing man. You know, there's an all-seeing eye watching you, watching me, watching everything and everybody all the time. We are be present before God. You who are listening and watching this television program, you need to really know this, that there is an all-seeing eye watching you. If you think that you're doing something and does anybody know what's going on, you're wrong. I want you to lick your fingers and go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse number 12. Notice what the Bible says in 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the vining of the son of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and of the discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's the power of God's word. But notice what verse 13 says. It says, neither is there any creature 
Are you a creature? Woman or man? Any creature that is not manifest in his sight. I told you there's an all seeing eye watching you. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him which whom we have to do. God is watching all of us. And we need to be cognizant of that fact. We need to realize that we are in the presence of God. So if, if God is watching us and he knows what's going on, we need to be very careful and mindful of how we live. Now, so the right attitude toward the creator, God. Some individuals, some of you out there say, I don't believe in God. There is no God. The psalmist said in Psalm 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Somebody say, well, God is dead. Well, I haven't heard anything about God even being sick. Better be careful. Well, look at the right attitude uh, of Cornelius toward the Creator. We need to have that, that respect for God and His Word. Right attitude toward God and His Word. Well, let's look at the right attitude toward the commandments. Look what he says. He says, we're still in verse 33. He says, to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. In other words, Peter, I don't want to hear your opinion. I don't want to hear your views. I want to know what God said. So that's the right attitude toward the commandments of the scripture. Let me pause here and just maybe work a few minutes here. What is your attitude toward scripture? Pause a moment. Are you listening? What is your attitude toward the commandments of God? The scripture. Paul tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All of it came from God. Old and New Testament. But Paul also says that we need to rightly divide the word of truth. We need to know what's binding today and what's not binding today. All scripture given by God. But everything in the Bible is not for us. It can be for our learning, but not for our living and not for our salvation. Why? Because things in the Old Testament, the Old Testament law, watch it, couldn't save it. In the Galatian letter, Paul said, in Galatians 3.21, I believe it is, Paul said, for if there had been a law given, the Old Testament was a God-given law. Then he says, if there had been a law given, which could have given life, truly righteousness or forgiveness or justification would have been by the law. Now, the law of Moses could not justify man. So therefore, we're not under the law of Moses. He said if righteousness came by the law, if righteousness came by the law, watch it, then Christ died in vain. It was a God-given law, but it was something that it couldn't give. What was it? It could not give eternal life. Now, now what's, your, what's your attitude towards the new and living way, the New Testament of Christ, the doctrine of Christ, the gospel of Christ? What's your attitude towards it? Now, do you recognize the Bible as the standard of authority in religion? Or do you say, well, just any way I do, and I'll come up with my own system? That's the wrong attitude. You need to have the right attitude. And Cornelius had the right attitude. He came in saying, whatever God says, I'm going to do it. Whatever God said, I'm going to do it. And we look in the book of Acts, the account of Cornelius and his household and their conversion. When you look at chapter 10, 1 through the last verse, Peter gives Luke writes the account. But when you look at Acts 11, he does it in order and he expounds on it. Acts 11 and verse number 4. Now, it seems like that when Peter came and preached the gospel to him, 
The Holy Spirit fell on it. But if you look at the order of what really took place, in other words, in chapter 10, it's not necessary the order. But in chapter 11, he gives it in order. What really happened? Well, what happened? Acts 11. Let's look at it. Acts 11, verse number 14 and 15. That's good. Acts 11, 13 and 14 here. Uh, verse 14 and 15. Who shall tell thee <clears throat> and thy house of words whereby thou shalt be saved? And he says, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them uh, as on us at the beginning. Peter said, when I came there and began to speak, the Holy Spirit came upon Cornelius and his household, and they spoke in tongues. No human hands. The Holy Spirit came directly on them. Why? Was it to save them? No, it wasn't to save them. What? It was to convince these Jews that came with Peter and Peter that the Gentiles was accepted to God. Now you need to go ahead and teach them and baptize them into Christ. In Acts chapter 10 and verse number 48, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, can a person be saved without being obeying the commandments of the apostle? No. Was Peter an apostle? Yes. Did he give him the command? He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Now, let me pause here a moment. Now, what is your attitude? Now, here's, listen to Cornelius. Look at Cornelius. Cornelius is a devout man. He's a God-fearing man. He's a giving man to the people. And he's a praying man. But he wasn't saved. Why? Because Cornelius was not in Christ. And if a person is not in Christ, they don't have permission of sin. Now, you need to know that and you need to have the right attitude what the Bible teaches about that. Just because you're praying and you're doing a lot of good things, if you're not in Christ, you're not saved. And no man can be saved without Jesus Christ. And no man can be pardoned from uh, from their sins without the blood of Christ. Now, Peter knew that. The Bible teaches that. I'm preaching that. Now, one must hear the good news of the gospel, and that's exactly what Peter did with Cornelius. He preached the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. What do you mean? Peter talked about Jesus Christ dying on the cross, shedding his blood, took that same blood and he brought one church. Now, if you're listening to me, you need to listen at this. There isn't but one church in which a man can be saved. Now, what's your, what, what, where are you getting that from? From Scripture. If In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I'll be on my church. Matthew 16, 18. Hebrews 3, 2, 8, rather, Verse number two, a minister of the uh, sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord shall pitch and not man. Christ built and bought the church with his blood. What's the purpose? To save man. That's the purpose of the church, to save man. Where is the church? The church that Jesus built is in him, in Christ. Romans 12, verse 4 and 5, the one body is in Christ. Somebody said, well, the church can't save you. The church is a saved. Why? Because they're in Christ. Now, Peter preached the gospel. He talked about Christ not only building the church, but watch it, him going down in Joseph's new tomb. And Mark's record, 16 in verse number 9, early on the first day, he was resurrected from the grave. You've got to believe that. That's the cardinal doctrine, one of the cardinal doctrines of Christianity. The death of Christ, the burial, and his resurrection, and his ascension back to heaven. A man, somebody. You see that? Now, you got to hear that gospel and leave it. Acts 15 and 7. You got to repent of your sins. You got to change your mind about sin and stop. Then confess Christ as the Son of God. Confess Him that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
and then you got to be baptized. Why? See, the right teaching, the right information. Watch it. Obey right destination. You won't have pardon. The right destination is in Christ. So you hear the gospel and believe with all your heart, repent of your sins, make the confession that you're of your faith in Jesus. It's confess, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You don't confess your sins. You confess Christ. Then you're baptized. Why? Because baptism is the last act on our part that puts us into Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 27, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Where are the children of God? In Christ Jesus. You want to be a child of God? Got to be in Christ Jesus. Then he says, for as many of you that's baptized into Christ, put on Christ. Somebody said baptism don't do this. It does. God has ordained that baptism put one into Christ. And also uh, in the in he, uh, First Corinthians 12, 13, we'll baptize into the body. Well, the Bible says in Acts 5 and verse number 14, people will add it to the Lord. Acts 2 and verse number 47 is added to the church. Well, what is the difference between added to the Lord and added to the church? When you add it to the Lord, you add it to the church. Why? Because the church of the Lord is in the Lord. That's, that's good, isn't it? Now, what is your attitude towards that? You've got to be obedient to the gospel of Christ. Faith, repentance, confession, baptism into Christ. Don't let anybody tell you you don't have to be baptized in order to get into Christ. Because you do. I certainly hope that you have the right attitude like God needs. I hope God will bless you richly from this message. May God bless and keep you until the next time. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you so very much for watching this television program. A Message from Heaven has been presented by The Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. We're located west of the intersection at James Road and Hollywood. Visit us each Lord's Day where you will receive a cordial greeting. Our schedule of services are Sunday Bible Class at 9.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. Sunday Worship at 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m.